Hello and welcome back to Overseer Auto Reviews. Today I'm back at Mercedes-Benz of Seattle reviewing this fresh off the truck 2022 Mercedes-Benz GLE 350 SUV. Now if you would please subscribe, that would be a very, very big help. And without further ado, let's break this vehicle down and complete a review. Personally, I'm a very big fan of the GLE model group as a whole, and I think the GLE 350 is a good place to get into if you're looking for a GLE uh, Mercedes vehicle or just an SUV in general. Um, the front end is pretty nice. It's got luxury elements to it. You can make this sportier in the 350 and over 350 plus trims. Um, but this does not have that option. That would be the AMG appearance group. That would give us a diamond shaped grill, um, a better bumper that sticks out a bit farther. It gets rid of the uh, overbite situation. And you also get body matched fender flares, which are a must have on this vehicle. Um, these fenders, pretty much make me gag. I do not like the way these look on the car. I think it takes away from the elegance and luxury status of a Mercedes-Benz vehicle. These look cheap, in my opinion. Uh, the AMG appearance group will also give us um, better wheels. I believe they come with the multi-spoke AMG wheels. Look very good. Um, belong on a CLS, but they work on other vehicles as well. Now we do have the winged grill. I think this is not too bad. The vents on this part of the grill are completely functional. There are vents in between the wings. You have this massive Mercedes emblem, which does host uh, the Distronic Adaptive Cruise Control uh, module in there. Below that is a front view camera. We have parking sensors all around the front. Um, that's because the vehicle has the driver convenience group. Um, and then we also have fake vents on the sides. Obviously, it's a four-cylinder engine. Um, there's really no point of having additional air go into it. The vehicle also comes with adaptive LED headlamps. Uh, great feature to have. It's driver input base. When you turn the steering wheel, these will turn based on steering input. Very great feature to have. The hood does have these very prominent body lines. There's four running across it. You have a black Mercedes star badge. And overall, the front end ties very nicely into the rest of the vehicle. Um, a little bit bulbous, but I think the bulbous design definitely works on this specific vehicle. Let's get into this engine bay. Now underneath the hood of this beautiful GLE 350, minus the fender flares, you'll have this rather small 2 liter turbocharged inline 4 cylinder. This makes 255 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. It's mated to a 9G Tronic 9 speed automatic dual clutch transmission and also has an all wheel drive drivetrain, the 4MATIC. This gets the vehicle to 60 and this variant in a 7.1 seconds. Now if you did opt for the rear wheel drive version of this vehicle, it will get you to 60 in 7 seconds. That's right the lower model trim is quicker to 60 than this one. Now, if you did want more power, you can upgrade to a turbocharged inline six cylinder in the GLE 450 and the GLE 53 AMG, or AMG 53, uh, however you want to say it. Um, and those will feature a turbocharged inline six cylinder. And if you did have a lot of money and wanted to go all the way up, you can get the GLE 63S, uh, and that will have a twin turbocharged V8. Uh, for a base car, I think this isn't too bad of an engine. This The 7.1 seconds is under wide open throttle. Um, you don't really need to be going that fast unless you're on a shorter on-ramp and you do need to floor it completely. The competition is also a lot quicker than this vehicle. The Dodge Durango does 60 in 6.4 seconds. The Jeep Grand Cherokee is in the same vicinity. Even the Toyota Highlander Hybrid is doing it in the upper six second range. So this is on the slower spectrum of your mid-sized three row SUV. And that's correct, I said three row because this does have an additional third row package, which I would not recommend in the AG Elite. Let's get on to the side, the rear, the trunk, and then eventually the interior as well. At the wheels, we have these 21 inch by 275 millimeter width. Uh, 10 spoke five arm wheels and i think these are absolutely gorgeous a lot better than these stock wheels that come on this vehicle uh, would look better with paint matched fenders in my opinion yes i'm going to keep telling everyone about the fenders throughout the whole video uh, and you do have silver brakes on the inside with pretty large disc brakes as well uh, i love the way that the wheels look especially in comparison to the offset you have at the rear um, these look very good. I definitely recommend upgrading the wheels if you are planning on buying a base model GLE. Now as much hate as I do give to these plastic fender flares, which really aren't too bad, I'm just over exaggerating, the side of the GLE is actually to die for. I think this is a model 
uh, in terms of its styling, especially in its competition, um, the XC90 doesn't look as good as this anymore. Uh, the side does have the fender flare arches and you got the stripe running all the way from the headlights into the taillights. Uh, you have the bottom body line as well. It does contour the door very nicely. It gives it a rounder look. It also makes the vehicle appear wider, which is what you want. Uh, you have these chrome door handle overlays, which do feature keyless go. Now I do have the keys in my pocket and what you do with keyless go is all you have to do is slide your hand into the handle to unlock the vehicle. You can effortlessly open the door to reveal this gorgeous interior. I'll show you that, it's a little tease. Uh, you have automatic folding mirrors. So when I press the little sensor, they go in. The mirrors do also have cameras on them for your surround view camera. A uh, great feature to have. If you do open the, ca uh, the door while the camera is open, it'll be a little void um, where the camera should be. Again, simple camera stuff. Uh, the rear windows have been tinted. This does not have the AMG night package, so these um, door tr rims will remain chrome. I think the chrome looks good on the white, especially with a beige interior. The bottoms of the mirror caps are also still plastic. Uh, the rear is relatively long for a car of this size, and that's why it does have a third row uh, for the model featured over here. Um, if you do look at the sticker, you will see that the third row is a $2,100 option, which I don't recommend you get. Now, this is a four-cylinder turbo, which means that fuel economy really isn't too bad. 19 in the city and 26 on the highway. You might also see that there's really no place to hang your cap once you are filling up. And the hack for that is there's this little nozzle thing coming out and you simply stick that in the hole right over there and let it be. Really simple. It's also very easy to put back into place. Now at the rear of the GLE 350, it's actually my favorite part, mainly because of these tail lights. They're LEDs and they look absolutely stunning when they're lit up. Above that, you have the GLE 350 badge in chrome the Mercedes-Benz star emblem in chrome, and the formatic badge, obviously in chrome, to tell everyone behind you in the Trader Joe's parking lot that you have the all-wheel drive version of the base GLE. You also have tr a trunk trim on the top and bottom portion of the trunk lid. Below that, you have the chrome diffuser with your completely fake exhaust tips. Allow me to demonstrate hand exhaust tip. completely fake. They actually dump right below uh, where the bumper ends. You do have these rear parking sensors, very important, extremely loud. You actually do have to go into the settings and turn them down because they're too intense, um, which is actually a good thing. You want to know where you are and your position in space. And you also have a tow hitch, very important because all of your 255 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque will definitely tow nothing. Let's do a trunk test. Before I do the trunk test, let's go over the amenities in the tailgate, power operated, and it does have power close as well, as you can see right here. Now the third row has been folded down, so we have more space. Underneath this cover right over here, you have the tonal cover, and what that does is it hooks into place um, over there, and you can slide it out, and it will anchor in over here, and you'll be able to completely block off any view uh, of what belongings you have in the tailgate. You also have chrome inserts over here, just for show, they've been protected by this blue film. This should be removed when the vehicle is being taken delivery of. The right side features the fuse box, and on the left side we have the first aid kit. The seat belts right over here are for the third row, which I will show you in a bit, and these have their own anchors on the sides. The second row can also be folded down by switches over here. One single push all the way down. We'll fold them like so, same button on the opposite direction, we'll fold them back up. Now let's get on with the trunk test. I fit in here completely fine, the tailgate would close as normally, the button for that is too far up otherwise I would hit it, but as you can see, trunk test pass. Can't say the same if the third row was up because it ends right over here. I would not fit and the tailgate would definitely not close. Let's fold the third row up just to show you how that works. Manual labor is the name of the game. 
you dodge durango has straps so you don't have to bend over completely get your pants dirty and actually be in pain from the door trim and the chevy tahoe also has buttons for the third and second row why doesn't the mercedes have any of that and to fold them back down you have to push these and let them fall not the best design element but you do have a third row so if you need it in an emergency situation it's there for you to use a one note thing is that you cannot have the tonneau cover and the third row at the same time let's get into this third row and let me complain about it some more all right third row time in order to get in there there's a little switch on the back portion of the second row seat and what that will do is completely move the seats forward to a desirable length for you to be able to climb in Gonna grab the guardrail. Scuff my boots and climb in like so. Now it's honestly not too bad here. There is a light which does shine pretty bright actually. The headrest can be moved up to a desired location so that you're not uncomfortable you can also do that with your shoulder blades um, and if we do sit over here I can show you how the leg room is behind a closed seat as you can see non-existent besides this mess you do have two USB-C ports which is generous and you do have two small cup holders also generous besides that literally nothing else back here the second row is a nice place to be. I have this seat set to my desired sitting position. Okay, footroom, really nice knee room and really nice headroom as well. The panoramic sunroof is definitely helping with that as well. You can see the seats here are in the macchiato beige MB text leather. They also have black stitching, which I think look very good, especially with the two-tone beige on black. The door panel on the left has soft touch leather all over the place. One complaint I do have is the door handle. If I do push it in, it feels like there's air inside, which I'm pretty sure there is. It's not a problem on this specific vehicle. On every GLD I've sat in, there is the same prevailing issue. Now you do have the window switch in metal. Window opens relatively fast. You also have the strip of ambient lighting, which I've set to pink because why not? You also have the natural grain brown wood trim with the Burmester uh, 3D surround sound system. Now, since these, this vehicle does come with the third row option, the second row seats are adjustable. Now, the entire two seat bench will move forward and the third seat um, is on its own, but these also have the backrest configuration and headrest configuration as well, which I think is a massive plus um, over the simple two row design of the vehicle. The backs of the seats have their own nets. The center console has two air vents, a little small cubby, and a charging port, which does have a USB-A and USB-C uh, charging output ports as well. I do like the way that the front blends into the rear. The ambient lighting strip goes all over the dash, all the way into this rear. It's kind of like the S-Class, except the S-Class is significantly better at that. Um, you do have large cubbies in the doors as well. Great positives in the second row. Really nothing I can complain about. The sunroof, which is really a panoramic moonroof, um, is also very nice. I like how wide open it is. It definitely adds a spacious element to it. Also, um, the spacious element is coming from the fact that these are light colored seats. Let's get into the front end. Here we're on the driver's seat of the 2022 GLE 350. The thing I like a lot about this interior is just the way it's designed. The trim runs all along the front end. This beautiful natural grain wood has a very nice little cabinet which slides out if you did get the upgrade you would have your wireless charger on this port you also have two cup holders which are um, illuminated with the ambient lighting as well behind that you have your drive select system if i turn the vehicle on and then i can choose whatever drive mode i would like and it says to not use with roof load for whatever reason but um 
just listen to the car I'd say. Uh, you do have your park cameras. You can see the sensors. This is the back camera. This is the front camera. Surround view camera, as you can see, if I turn the wheels. There's the rear panel, the rear, and the uh, trailer hitch, which is always nice. This is not steering input based, however. And then you can go into the vehicle settings, your traction control, your manual mode. Um, you also have the tow air protection, which is always nice your downhill speed regulation, and your car wash mode, which is also great. Um, and then you also will have the additional assistance stuff. I have gone over all of this stuff completely um, in my GLC review linked, and you'll see a pop-up banner, and you can see all of your ambient lighting controls as well. Uh, you can change the color. You can have a multi-color, uh, for example, red moon. This will change colors from a different array of colors. You can see that there is two-tone, pink over here, blue on the door handles and in the foot welds. And these will change and they'll vary because the um, door handles and foot wells just change colors like you can see. You can also change the brightness of these. You can have a brightness zone where one br zone is brighter than the other. I like to have anything on full blast. I just think it looks good. It's also quite comforting. Um, I also have the climate control system. This is a dual zone, so um, both passengers do have their own um, choices of how hot or cold they would like their seats and relative area to be. You have the um, hazards button over here, the rear defrost, the AC reset, the in uh, cabin air circulation mode. You also have all of the other temperature control options over there. There is a volume button on the right, uh, really fun to use. The clicking sounds are very nice. The media button right over here, and you can also change that from radio to your Bluetooth. And then there is the navigation button as well. You can see that the navigation is pretty detailed. This is also a touch screen, so you can see that I can actually touch the screen to zoom in or out or move around. Right now, it's a bit laggy because the PDI still has to be done, but for something that hasn't had PDI delivered uh, properly yet, this is actually really good. The center screen on the left side of the bigger infotainment system you can see on the left side with the driver convenience package we have the distronic cruise control set you also have the volume and call controls on the right side this little square controls the settings on the right screen and there's a little touch sensor which controls the rest on the left i can also change my screen over here um, to be something i'd like a lot more you can also change what type of information you'd like displayed. Uh, for example, your fuel economy, your route, your radio, and, and other things like that. It's also very fun to play around with. I, I like changing the settings and changing the display as well. Uh, there is definitely a more sporty option. And you also have the full screen display for if you are cruising on the freeway, you don't want to worry too much about a lot of other information. You do have this choice as well. Overall, it's a very good and simple infotainment system. It might look overwhelming at first, but once you get used to it, it's really not bad. You also have the uh, controls for the parking brake on the left, as well as your headlight controls on the left right next to it as well. Really intuitive to use. Burmester sound system is really nice. The luxury package in this also gives us heated and ventilated seats. You also have up to three memory settings with these seats. I love them. Front, back, backrest headrest and then you also have thigh support which extends forward or backwards it gives you a nice support when you're just cruising one will rest your leg a bit you also have the little center console pretty small but works great and then the macchiato beige hand rest as well overall it's a great interior i like the way it drives uh let's get on with that drive Here we are driving the 2022 GLE 350 for Matic. I can say that it is a nice vehicle to be driven in and drive. Now I do have experience with the GLE trim level. I've ridden in a 450, I've driven an AMG GLE 53, and I've also ridden in this vehicle and driven it. And I can say that I do prefer the 
regular coil suspension over the air suspension. This vehicle has the regular suspension, not the aromatic, and it does give you more confidence when you take turns. It feels more planted and also doesn't feel like the vehicle is floating in the air. Now this is dependent on viewer preference. Um, if you do like a stiffer ride, then the coil suspension is better for you over the air suspension, but if you like a more comfortable, smoother uh, ride for longer drives, then the air suspension will be better off for you. That is a couple thousand dollar option though. Overall rebound stiffness is pretty good. Engine power does get you there. I'll have a quick 0 to 60. And the wind noise really isn't bad. You can also option this with the acoustic sound dampening as well. Overall, a very good vehicle to be driven in. First contender for the comparison is the 2022 Volvo XC90 Momentum. This does have a turbocharged 2 liter inline 4 cylinder just like the Mercedes. It does get to 60 in 7.5 seconds. This is a Scandinavian vehicle, meaning that it is made in Sweden and it does have good quality on the interior. Um, reliability may be iffy on this, but it shouldn't be too bad considering that it is a modern Volvo vehicle. I would take the Mercedes over this one. Next up would be the 2022 BMW X5 S Drive 40i. Configured, it is pretty much the same thing as this vehicle. It is better in performance, however, 0 to 60 in the mid 5 seconds because this has a turbocharged inline 6 cylinder. I don't know if it's the B58 or not, but it's a good engine. Next up is the Audi Q7, and stay the world away from this vehicle. Uh, I am biased against the Q7s, I just don't like them. But at this price point, 133 grand for a base level? No. You, for 130 grand, you can get a GLD 63 AMG. The last one is kind of unexpected. This is the Grand Cherokee uh, long wheelbase with the luxury package. And this can be optioned with a 5.7 liter Hemi engine, which I highly recommend. And it does have a lot of luxury appointments in the interior, as well as a plethora of screens. This is also a good option. And that is the complete review on the 2022 Mercedes-Benz GLE 350 4MATIC SUV. In my opinion, it's not a bad SUV for what it is. $68,720 as this one is sitting right here right now. I think it's a good buy. Yes, it is a hefty finance, but you do get a full-sized luxury SUV. Now the thing is, if you are getting a 350, I highly recommend you do not get the third row and you also get the AMG Prince package like I've been blabbering on about throughout the entire review. I have been exaggerating slightly, they actually aren't too bad. The third row is good for emergency use and if you do want to spare some cash, uh, you can forget about the AMG Prince package. It's just something that bothers me a little bit as a car guy. I like to see fluid designs and vehicles that I personally drive. Again, $68,000, it's really not too bad. If you did have a little bit extra money, I would highly recommend that you also step up to either a 450 or an AMG trim level as you do get extra power. Overall, this is a great vehicle. I would highly recommend you purchase one. Thank you again for watching. Please do consider subscribing and remember to keep on driving. Ah. No!